Hey, what's up, people? So I'm going to show you how you can create a nice color palette for your designs. So if it be a game designer or graphics designer, I'll just show you how you can create a nice, awesome color palette that you can use. So let's just start up a clear new project and I'll show you how I built this from scratch. So I'll just go over here, go to file, go to new. And let's do a 1920 by 1080 plain, clean document. So I haven't messed with anything. Now I have actually, uh, let me reset Affinity Designer so we're all in the same view so that if I reset everything. So all I did was go to a uh, window view, studio and reset studio. I'm using Affinity Designer version one, by the way. So I don't like these two here. I don't use them. So I'll just click and drag, click and drag, and I can easily just close this section right here. Now I like to have the layers floating. I'm left-handed. So I'll just undock this layer section and just place it around here. Right. And I'm using the space bar and just turning this into the hand tool and just dragging this here. Nothing super fancy. So the first thing I'll do is to create a shape. And this is going to be a simple background shape. I, I could just use a square, but I'm just using this and I'll select a slightly dark color like that. You can head over to swatches and on the swatches section, let's see if we can set this to and instead of colors, I'll switch over to grays so you can actually see the percentage of gray you're using. So here I'm actually using 70% black for this and this is going to be our background so i'll just call this bg so what we want to do is to just study the color wheel and create a nice little color palette we're going to be using for our design with that let's head over to color now you can see the color wheel here in case you can't see this just click over here and go to wheel it might actually be on sliders your hsl sliders which is a good slider by the way to select colors but i'll go to the color wheel also, what you can do is to use a color wheel from the internet if you're not comfortable using this color wheel. So I'll just use a set of complementary colors. So here I have on my downloads, I've downloaded a nice little color wheel for kids, color wheel chart for kids. You can just search the internet anywhere and you can find a nice color wheel. Now, while there are different kinds of color selections, I'm going to use a complementary color uh, selection and I'm going to use these colors. I'm going to use red and green. So here I'll just move over to say here just midway or I could just drag this and make this really saturated and what I'm going to do is to use the ingredient. So I'll create a shape just this one like that. A nice little rectangular shape. So once I've selected my first color, I'll just go over to fill tool and just click on that and go over here where it says solid. I'm going to switch this to linear. So now I have a linear gradient here. I'm going to change this. So here I have my red, but at the end, I'm going to change this to green. So I'll just rotate this to the green section. So we have that contrast between the red and the green. So we can easily see here, and I think this is too saturated. So I'll just drag this and desaturate that. I'll go over to the red too, and try to just desaturate this red like that. Good. So that I have these two colors. How do I use this? Now, if I try to sample it. Let's say, for example, I have this nice little shape here and I'll go over to the fill and go to color and just change this to a regular color. So it's not using the gradient. So if I want to sample, let's say this color around here, how do I do that? Because if I use the eyedropper tool and I select this and just drag this over here, we can actually see what's happening. Right, so we have our tool here and we can use that to select 
any color we want. So I'll go over here and I could just lock this and I'll just call this my, uh, my color. And I can use this to design a level, right? So, sorry, no, um, don't select <laughs> on the main layer here where we have our color, but rather we select our color from the color wheel right here. So I'll click on this object and with the eyedropper tool selected, we can just drag anywhere and select here. So now we can see we have a nice little color gradient. Let's add an accent color. Basically, it's one color we're going to use for separate elements. Now, this can be any color you want to pick, but what I can do is just go over here to this kind of like orange for like lights. So I'm going to select this and I'll just draw a nice little circular shape around here like that. And I'll drag this ellipse on top. So this is still going to be part of my new color wheel. I could just drag it over here and make it slightly bigger. I'll just leave it like that. So one thing we also need is a nice little gradient between black and white so that we can have color variations. Black and white are going to be also important if you want to create your nice little colors for your level design. So let's see what I mean here. So next. I'm going to make sure I'm not clicking on anything and I'll just go to these swatches and go to grays and select 90% black. So with 90% black selected, what I'm going to do is to just draw a nice little shape like that. And I'll use the transparency tool and I'll just drag this from the bottom like that. All right, so I think that's super, uh, that's super fine. So with this selected, what I'll do is to make sure I'm not selecting anything again, and I'll draw another shape like that. And this time around, I'm going to select about 35% black, or let's say 30% black, and I'll use the transparency tool again, but this time around, I'll just drag it from the top like that. So I have these two you know, uh, these two colors, or these two values are selected because technically black and white are not values. What I want to do is to superimpose them on my already existing color wheel. So to do that, I'll click on the color and I can drag this to the right. And what is going to happen is if I move this up to the top, you can actually see I have a lighter shade here at the top, right? I'm going to drag this to the top a bit and slightly rotate this. So it's slightly above here, like that. And I'll select this one at the bottom and I'll drag this and make sure it clips. So it's actually a bit to the right of this object. And with that, I'll just move it upwards a bit so I can have a darker section like that. But I might just want to drag this down a little bit and just leave it like that. So you can go as dark as you want or as bright as you want, but I'll just leave it uh, like that. So we could always go back and darken this and we could always go back and brighten this like that. And we could always adjust and change how that is. So with this, I'll just get rid of this one. We actually have a nice little uh, color wheel. So what I'll do is to just group everything together like that. And I'll hit control G and I'll just call that our uh, palette. And this is a nice little uh, color palette we can use to I'll lock the background layer. So this is a nice little color palette we can use to select colors and use that to create our design. You can see if we go up a bit, we're getting bright values. If we go down a bit, we're getting darker values. And you can use this to build your level. If you wanted to use a neutral 
you know, example here, we can use this example. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this. Just a quick demonstration on how I can use this to create a nice little uh, mock-up design. Because, hey, why not? I just made a nice little color palette. Now I want to use it to create my level. So I'm using a simple set of shapes using the pen tool. So I'm going to hit P and I'll just drag a nice little selection like that. Now with this selected, I'll just hit B. I'll use my eyedropper tool and just pick something here like that. And then for my background, I'll just hit V and I'll use the rectangle and marquee tool and draw a nice shape. And I'll use the eyedropper tool just to select a bright little color. So this is going to be like my little sky background. Yeah, something like that. So now that I have that selected, I'll just go ahead and add a few elements to this level. So I'll use a rounded rectangle tool just to draw some nice little pillars like that. And I'll use this. Oh, sorry, we got this one. And I'll use the eyedropper tool tools, to select and sample. And I'll go over to use another shape. So let's draw another shape here. And this is going to be from a smaller now. So with this shape selected, use the eyedropper tool. So I want this one to be above everything. So I'll just drag this, place it at the top, because that's going to be like my uh, foreground color. Now, we can, we're using this, but we can use a gradient as well, just to make this background really stand out. So what I'll do is to go over to the gradient tool and just drag this down like that. So because we're using these colors, it doesn't mean we can necessarily have to stay down there. I just want to add a little bit of gradient to this one, like that. And I'll sample this color, like this one. And I'll just duplicate this, make it a bit thinner, and just move this around and see what I'm getting here. So you can see what I'm doing is to try to create a nice little background. All right. Now let's duplicate this one. Hit Control J. Just move it around a couple of times and make this super thin. I'll put my palette at the topmost because I don't want any. I don't want anything to be behind my uh, my palette. So now that I put this here, and let's just keep going. So I'm going to duplicate this again. And move this around and make this really quite thin. So I'm just making this super thin like that. And I want this to be like shaped like a tree. So I'll just use the pen tool and draw a nice little shape like that. And close this shape. Use the eyedropper tool to sample this color for this shape. And now we can see we have that nice little tree. What I'll do is to just duplicate this. So I hit Control J and I'll flip this. So let's flip this and move this like, oops. Did I create a copy? I didn't create a copy. So I'll hit Control J, good. And at the top here, you can actually see flip horizontal. So I'll just flip this to kind of like have a nice little uh, tree shape like that, which is quite, uh, Quite cool. So we have this nice little tree shape. So what I'll do now is to add this shape here. 
And let's open up our navigator because this really helps in seeing, you know, how your color is doing. And for this one, I'll add our gradient as well. Whoops. So I'll just go over here and undo that. Go to our gradient tool. And we'll just drag this over here. I'll make this quite close because I don't want that difference to be much. Like that. So that we can still have a little bit of gradient on that foreground. So what I'll do is to create some of these, but I want to make them a bit faded out to the background, fully into the background. So I'll take this one, Control J, just drag it over here. And what I'll do now is just dial down the opacity like that. So you can see what's happening here is that we can see some of the uh, tree, like this little trunk looking thing in the background and it's over there. So what I'll do is to select this group, this one, this one, hold shift, select these three and I'll group them, control G. And I'll hit control J to duplicate that group. And what I'll do is to move this group a bit to the right like that. And I'll dial down the opacity of this group as well. Like that, right? So you can actually see what's uh, what's clearly going on here. So what I also want to do is to add some elements that will just overlap in between so that this can be quite nice. And I'll just add a little bit of uh, effects here. So to make this look awesome here, I'll click on this guy and where it says FX, I'll add a little bit of Gaussian blur here and just blur this section out like this, just a little bit of blur, nothing too serious. And for the elements that are really close to us, like the tree, we can add a little bit of shading on this tree to make the tree unique. So what I'll do is to group this one and these two curves. I'll just hit Control G to group them all together. And I'll hit the gradient tool and drag. Oops. So I'll need to sample this color and hit G. And you can see what we have here. So I'm just lighting this up just a bit. Let's drag this down here. So you can see we're adding subtle lighting to this tree. We could always reverse a gradient and rotate it. If I hit reverse, it's going to flip that gradient. Or we could just drag here and rotate it like that. So we have the light coming from like, say, the right side, like that. And remember, we can always change the lighting. We have our color palette, so we are not deviating from the colors we have in our level. So what I want to do now is just create a nice little, you know, uh, show some depth around here as well. So I'll just use the pen tool to create a nice little shape like that. Nothing too complex. Now it's actually using our fill. I don't want it to use our gradient fill. So I'll just go to color and use the eyedropper tool to select any of our dark colors here. I'm using this dark red, which is nice. And I want this red to be in between the tree and the foreground element here. So where's our tree first? Let's find our tree, it's here. And I want this to be like so yeah i think i and like it uh like it here so what i can do here is just to use now the cool thing is uh if you're on your swatches you can easily see the recent colors you've actually been using in your uh, in the scene over here now i want this to be slightly curvy so i'll go over to the uh node tool and what can we do here 
uh, I'll add a point here. And I'll just drag this and I'll make this a smooth curve by clicking on this anchor point. And I like this color, so I'll just sample a bit of this color right here. And all I can do is just dial down the opacity of this layer like that. And let's move this. Oops, I'll undo that. Hit the move tool and let's just drag this down a little bit. So to add a little bit of mystery to this simple scene, what we can do is to add some nice little atmospheric fog. But before we do that, let's think about a sense of lighting. Now, remember, we have an accent color we are actually using in our scene, which is this color right here. So let's use that to add a little bit of additional lighting to our level. So I'm going to do a, uh, let's just draw a nice little shape here like that. And what I'll do is to sample, using the Adriver tool to sample this color. And I'll use the transparency tool and just drag that like that. You can see what's happening here. So we have a little bit of lighting information like that. And I'll just drag this, whoops, I'll undo. And just drag this up. So it's just out there, right? And I'll just pull this up like that. And what I can do is to just dial down the opacity because we don't want this to to be everywhere, like so. Now that's super, uh, that's super cool. And what we can even do if we wanted to is to add some of that information here. Now I have the shape selected. I'll hit Control J to duplicate the shape, and I'll drag this shape under this shape. So what I've done is just to clip this shape underneath. underneath. So that I've clipped this shape, what I can do is to just select this color. Now this is going to be very bright and it's going to overtake the color of this shape. We can use the transparency tool and just drag it like that, just a little bit of it. And we can also dial down the opacity. So this gives us a subtle hint of that accent color we have for our color palette. And finally, let's add some of that fog information at the bottom. So to do that, let's go over here. And what I want to do is to add a little gradient to all these background elements like this one and this group here. So I'll group them all together. This, this, and this, hit Control G. And we can easily use the transparency tool and just drag this up here. You can see what it does. It adds a bit of mystery to the object and we can see how we could just fade something out. Like that. All right, so that we've done, let's select this and I'll go up and select this, excluding the color palette and I'll hit Control G to group everything together. So I'm just going to call this our, uh, our um, BG art. And again, don't be afraid to add a lot of um, lights a lot of white and black to your design because those are accent uh, colors. But I'll just leave this strictly on the palette file and I'll hide this uh, palette. So if I wanted to add a little bit of uh, effects to this, what I can do is to go over here on the background out element and I'll go over to adjustments. And one of the ones I like using is levels. And here, I'll just begin to play around with this so we can see some of that output in black. And let's just move over here so you can see what we're doing. Also, your navigator helps. 
So you can always eyeball the navigator and it will actually show you, hey, this is how, what this is uh, looking like right now. And this is not too bad, but 100% of everything is bad enough. So I'll just go over here and drag this down a bit. Like that. So leave it at about 75%. And what we can do is to play around with this. We can add another effect called the recolor, but this is going to change our an adjustment, sorry, called recolor. Just to experiment and play around with this. So with recolor, you can see color selections. You can drag out a saturation. You can make this grayscale. And the idea is to mix and match your initial palette colors with this color. I'll just drag the navigator to see what we have here. And I'll just drag this down like so. So we're having more of that little bit of reddish tone here. All right, so you can do a lot with these adjustments. Another one I like using is using the uh, soft proof. Sorry, the filter. So the filter is going to add Subtle effect on everything. You can play around with the density and play around with the color of the filters as well. So uh, I think I'm making this too complicated and advanced. Hopefully you get the point and nothing should be 100%. So I'll just drag some of these. And yeah, so basically that's how you can create a strict strict interesting color palette for your uh for your game and you know we haven't fully taken advantage of our accent color forgive me i'll just add one more thing just to show you how important that is so let's say we want to indicate where this lighting is if i select this shape i could just drag a few of these around like that just have a few here. Now these will look like collectible items for a game. And what I'll do is to group everyone. So I'll just go over here, hit Control G, and group each of these. And I'll hit Shift Control uh, Control J to duplicate that group. So for this second set of groups, I would add a uh, blur. And this is going to blur everything like that. And I'll put this above so you can see that blur in effect. And I'll change the uh, blend mode to something that makes it a bit bright. I think add is good. So I can now change this and you can see how this is looking. So yeah, might not be the best change, but these we have a little bit of change here. So we'll just hide this and we can always get rid of what doesn't work like that. All right, good. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned one of few things on how you can, you know, improve your art using a uh, a color wheel. And remember, we just used we just used this guy. A complementary colors. We used the red to the green. But if you actually look at our design here, we actually have reds and greens, but they have been slightly toned down and tweaked in a way. And this is our parent palette. But for our nice little background design, we're using this to represent our palette and what we can do from here is to you know add more of that effect to make it quite interesting and nice so uh yeah thanks for watching